Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today, I have a very special video for you guys and girls because today is a video I've spent a lot of time thinking about and I formulated a list, an idea. I spent a lot of time pulling these out of my collection and I really gave this video a lot of thought, so I hope you enjoy it. Um, one of my subscribers, Heinke, uh, she wrote me and said that it would be a fantastic idea to do a list of fragrances that are marketed towards men, but that would smell amazing on a woman. And I've been thinking about this list for a while, and I kind of already had an idea, but she really gave me the spark to make this happen. So, Heinke, I really do appreciate it. Um... It was an amazing recommendation, and I'm going to do this video. A lot of people have asked for it, believe it or not, and um, I've been meaning to do this, but these long format videos take time, and um, something that is in short demand nowadays in the Ra in the Ramsey household. Um, so let's do Scent of the Day, because we have to, because it's such an amazing scent. Uh, this is from the Hermescence line. This is Queer d'Ange, and... Uh, this is a Jean-Claude Elena. As you can see, um, I don't have a cap. Let me grab my microfiber cloth, if you don't mind. So I don't have a cap, which the cap is beautiful, so I'm actually really disappointed that I don't have a cap. But I got this tester at about a third of the price of retail, uh, and it is a tester. It says down there at the bottom, Demonstration. Um, but the cap is like an like it's like wrapped in leather uh, for the for the Hermescence line. It's beautiful, and as I've worn this fragrance, this is actually the first time I've worn given the fragrance a full wear. It's not the first time I've smelled it, but it's the first time I've given it a full wear. And I'll tell you what, this is an amazing leather fragrance. It's not my go-to leather. I like leathers like Antaeus, Leonard, Pour Homme, Van Cleef and Arpels, Pour Homme, stuff like that. You've heard me say stuff like that many times before. I like, um, you know, old school leather fragrances, if you will. This is a very modern leather. Um, see how the juice is almost see-through and in, in tan? Imagine if a leather had that color. Um, almost like a, like a, like a tan, like a, like a very light tan leather. Um, and that's that's what you get from this. This That's what this reminds me of. Uh, it, it has cumin in the opening as well, but don't let that put you off if you don't like cumin. It's expertly blended. Uh, Jean-Claude Elena has used cumin to perfection in a couple of his fragrances, uh, Declaration and stuff like that. Uh, but this has this Hawthorne and heliotrope note with musk and violet. And it just is a very floral, supple, but deep leather. It's beautiful. I love it. Um, so here is um, Queer de Orange. That's my scent of the day. Without further ado, let's jump into this because this is going to be a long video. Again, the idea is all of these fragrances are marketed towards men. Um, so you won't find many niche fragrances here because a lot of niche uh, is now unisex. So these are either vintage fragrances or niche before the niche went unisex um, or just old school masculine designers. And um, obviously I could have picked a lot more, but I wanted to give you guys kind of an array of my thoughts. So some of these are masculine that have some powdery elements. Some of them are masculine that have some vanilla elements. Some of them are masculine that have some floral elements. And we'll start with the old school ones. We're actually gonna start with a very special fragrance because this fragrance is the first fragrance marketed towards men ever. Uh, this, this began the gender divide, if you will. Uh, and this is a fragrance called Mouchoir de Monsieur. Now in the old days, um, Mouchoir basically translates to handkerchief uh, or pocket square. Uh, or tissue. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a French speaker, but uh, it's one of those three. And the custom of the day is the man would wear his pocket square or his handkerchief in his sleeve, and he would actually spray the pocket square with a fragrance with this fragrance. And then at the end of the day, at the end of the date, if he met a lady that he liked at the time, he would take it out of his sleeve and leave it for her. Very um. Uh, 
there were different rules back then, you know, uh, sophisticated dating rituals of old, you could say. Uh, but um, this fragrance is a fragrance that, even though it's it's geared towards um, men, uh, Monsieur is in the name, uh, came out in 1904. It has this fougere. This is like a classic fougere. It has lavender. It has lemon verbena. Um, there's rose. It's a little bit floral. It's, you know, there's a little bit of patchouli, um, and, but there's also vanilla. Guerlain does vanilla like no one else. There's iris, beautiful iris. There's oak moss, and, uh, there's civet. And the civet gives off a slight, you know, halitosis feel, if you, but not as much as Jiki. I like wearing this more than Jiki, to be honest with you. And Jiki is a fragrance that was the first modern fragrance uh, with modern synthetics and that was actually targeted towards women and so here's a great start for the gender roles to be reversed so if you're a woman and you like Jiki try to get your nose on Mouchoir de Monsieur uh, beautiful discontinued be well actually I don't know if it's discontinued or they only allow you to get it now at the Paris boutique but it's absolutely gorgeous. One of the one of the greatest fragrances, um, to, you know, Guerlain ever created. It's a it's a it's a brilliant fragrance, especially if you're a lavender lover. Now, speaking of lavender, that's a great segue into our next fragrance, and it's another old school. We're gonna go a little bit in time with this video. I was able to kind of put these um, in order of release up to a point. And then you'll notice that uh, at the end, they just kind of start going all over the place. But I'll let you know when that happens. So that was 1904. This is 1934. So we're jumping 30 years in the future. This is Caron's Pour un Homme. Pour un Homme. And Caron's Pour un Homme, look at the color of the juice. A lot of people think lavender is um, purple. It's not. Lavender is actually a green color like this in a, in a fragrance. Uh, and this fragrance is a very simple but very effective fragrance. And if look at the bottle that I'm holding. If you can find this vintage bottle, trust me, I actually put the new formula in fragrances that I hate. But this is a love. And it's going to get a lot of wear from me this summer. Uh, but if you're a woman, just because this says... Uh, Pour un homme in it. Don't let this discourage you. Beautiful lavender and vanilla and musk. That's it. It's very simple. It's lavender, vanilla, and musk. And um, it's a little sweet, but it's not so sweet that it would put somebody like me off that doesn't necessarily like sweet fragrances. Um, and it is a, it's, it's one of the all-time great uh, masculine fragrances that I think easily these old school fragrances are great kickoff points. If I was a if I was a woman trying to get my nose on some masculine scents, I would start with these old school scents and kind of work my way into the future because there's some amazing fragrances from the past that just because they're not new, they don't get hyped. Um, you know, now with something like this, obviously if your father or grandfather wore this, you might have a hard time wearing it as a woman, but if you can disconnect from that or if you don't already have a scent association with this fragrance, uh, it's absolutely beautiful. One of the best vanilla lavender fragrances out there. In fact, there's a new fragrance from Celine called Rimbo. And Rimbo is a unisex fragrance because it's a niche fragrance. Now all niche fragrances are unisex, right? And it's basically a lavender, vanilla, musk, and they added a um, wheat note. So they added like this hops type note to it. Um, and they're charging 400 bucks or whatever Celine's pricing is. I don't know Celine's pricing, so don't kill me. Maybe it's 200, I don't know. But whatever it is, it's expensive. And I would rather just wear this. So, um, Check this out. If you're going to go spend hundreds on Rimbo, you might want to check this one out first. Great example of why this video is important. Okay, now we're going to go to another all-time classic. Again, one of the best fragrances Guerlain ever made, in my opinion. My, It's not my favorite masculine, but it's 
damn close. And the older formulation is even better. But this is a um, Listerine bottle, which they now discontinued the Listerine bottles. I don't know what Guerlain's doing, to be honest with you. Um, they put them in the Loam Ideal, those square bottles. All of the Guerlain's come in that bottle now. Uh, but this is Abbey Rouge powdery you have to like powdery fragrances if you're a woman oh god it's so good um it is basically this um this lemon with bergamot and orange with patchouli there's benzoin in the base there's vanilla and there's this beautiful leather that comes through, absolutely stunning leather that comes through in the base. It comes out even more in the vintage, but you will still get it in the dry down. Uh, but it is very powdery. And if you don't like powdery fragrances, you might not like this, but I think this is a masterpiece. Um, you know, my favorite Guerlain masculine to wear is probably Heritage. That's what I'm most comfortable in. Um, because I love that DNA, but this is, um, this is, this is a, this is a gem, and I think, um, I think more women might actually wear this than, than let on, you know, or maybe they steal some sprays at night from their husband's bureau, absolutely beautiful stuff, um, stunning, 1965 by Guerlain, now 1966 has two fragrances, and the first one is probably one you are not expecting. I told there's going to be some on this list that you probably were expecting, like Abbey Rouge, that's powdery and all that good stuff. And it's a take on Shalimar, a masculine take on Shalimar. Easy for a woman to wear. This is a little bit of a shock, maybe, but it keeps that powdery DNA. And it's a fragrance called Canon Cologne. And Canon, I want to say, is a Scandinavian house, okay? Um, there's a lot going on with this fragrance. Um, the one that I have is the Made in Canada version. This was sent to me by Anuj. Thank you, Anuj. Um, I really appreciate doing business with you. You've been a fantastic partner. Um, and Anuj sent me this in a haul, and I, I had never smelled it, completely blind. But I got it, and I sprayed it and wore it and thought, wow, this really reminds me, the powderiness and the dry down reminds me of Abbey Rouge. Also 1960, 1965, okay? one So one year after, you have Canon. And Canon starts off with this very citrusy, very aromatic, Key lime and Sicilian bergamot with clary sage. You get this uh, cinnamon floral. The jasmine in here is very pronounced. Okay, actually, while I was wearing it, I wore this to bed. I haven't had a chance to give this a full wear yet. But I wore this to bed, and I thought Rich Mitch would hate this because the jasmine is extremely pronounced. And it says Egyptian jasmine for whatever that's worth. I don't know. Uh, Lily of the Valley, violet, frankincense with musk, Haitian vetiver, oak moss, moss, sandalwood, honey, amber, and patchouli. Very powdery, though, in the dry down. But um, it definitely, you if, you if you had to assign a gender to this, I could see how this was considered a masculine scent in the 1960s, but this would be very easy for a woman to pull off. Um, it's a little bit more maybe um, traditionally masculine because it doesn't have that Guerlain vanilla that, you know, pulls it to, to the traditionally unisex Shalimar type way, if you will. Uh, but I would say if you like powdery fragrances, this one might surprise you. And I think you can find bottles for pretty cheap because no one talks about this fragrance. It's from 1966, first of all. Second of all, it's a house that I think this is one of their only hits um, so Canon Cologne is one to put on the list if you're a woman looking to explore masculine scents. Okay, now I'm going to include one that might surprise some people, but I include, I'm including it simply because I heard a story 
once or twice, a couple times I've heard this story, that in the old days, women uh, who wanted to wear something that was not sweet or florally or, you know, number five or something like that, they wore this. This is Dior Eau Sauvage from 1966. This is an Edmund Rudnitska. Uh, and this fragrance uh, is not my favorite, I must admit. It's, it's the style of the fragrance. It's not the execution of the fragrance. There's nothing wrong with the fragrance. It's the citrusy, fresh, hideon, you know, that stuff mm, doesn't really do it for me. Uh, Parfumo says there's cumin in here. I don't get very much cumin. Uh, although I know Rudnitska loved to use cumin. Uh, there's a big hit of basil and bergamot, uh, but it's very fresh, very citrusy, very easy to wear. I could see a woman in the Mediterranean climate, you know, really uh, just layering this on. You won't offend anyone. There is some oak moss and carnation, old school carnation and stuff like that, coriander, vetiver. Um, but it's basically a citrus cologne. So if you're a woman and you don't like sweet scents, you don't like floral scents, you don't want to wear a traditional chiffre, which was very popular for women in the old school days with Mitsuko and, you know, stuff like that. Check this one out. Check out Trio Sauvage. It might surprise you. Um, it might remind you of your father, but it might surprise you. You might really love it. Uh, okay. Now we're going to go to the year 1972, at least... That's what's listed in Parfumo. 1973, I'm sorry. It's a discontinued scent. By the way, these are going to be a mix of easy to find and very hard to find fragrances, okay? So just be prepared for that. This one is a very hard to find fragrance, and it's very expensive right now. Uh, it's a Creed, and it's called Acia Aluminum. I used to think of this as a Creed's take on a masculine Shalimar, like uh, Creed's take on Abbey Rouge, if you will. But they did something um, really interesting with this scent. They added these fruity notes that almost give off this banana-like vibe sometimes. So you get the bergamot in the top. And this, these gray caps, by the way, signify EDTs. Creed doesn't do EDTs anymore, okay? So EDTs are dead. These are some of their best fragrances ever created, EDTs. Especially bang for your buck and value and and you know what you smell um i don't know i don't know how these ended up just going to the trash bin because these are some of the most amazing fragrances creed ever did um and you smell some of the most beautiful bergamot some of the most amazing vanilla it it smells like you know guerlain quality vanilla vanilla but you smell something that gives off this almost, you know, potpourri and real ambergris. It smells like real ambergris in the base. Whether it's real or not, I don't know. But it smells that way. It gives off that impression, that sparkle, that, you know, that pop, that real ambergris gives to a fragrance. And as you can see, I have worn the holy hell out of this fragrance. Look at that dent. I mean, that's a dent. Um... Uh, there's the name, by the way, if you didn't catch it. Acier Aluminum, which is supposed to be like Knight in Chain Mail or something in French. And if you take the name literally and you smell it, you might, give a, you might get a little bit of a metallic smell. But I think it's just the mixture of the fruits, the ambergris, and the citruses. Amazing fragrance. I think it would smell drop-dead gorgeous on a woman. Some people say this smells like 1970s uh, Richard Branson. Richard Branson? Not Richard Branson. What am I thinking? Um, Tom Selleck, you know, hairy-chested, mustache, old-school 70s. Um, I get where they're coming from, but I think that this would smell amazing on a woman. And this was marketed towards men. Okay. Now we're going to go to another one that's going to surprise you. And since we were talking about uh, Tom Selleck in 70s porn mustaches, this one is Jovan Sex Appeal for Men. Now, the marketing on this is so bellicose and traditionally, I don't even know how to say it, it 
it, it's 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 inappropriate for today's time let's say okay um it it the if you go read the old uh verbiage on the box actually here let me let me read this let me read this to you just to, so you get a kick out of it it says sex appeal now you don't have to be born with it this provocative, stimulating blend of rare spices and herbs was created by man for the sole purpose of attracting women at will. Man can never have enough. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Um, a little bit piggish, potentially, but if you're a woman, this is a beautiful patchouli, um, gorgeous patchouli with spices and sandalwood. That's it. It's very simple. It's absolutely stunning, though, for what it is. You know, you can pick these up. Now, these are the older bottles. The newer bottles have silver caps. They don't have this writing on the front. The writing has changed. The Jovan has a box around it and all that stuff. But if you can find an older bottle, even if you have to pay a little bit more, I got two bottles of this for cheap. You know, I got two bottles for like 40 bucks. And each bottle nowadays, I think, is like 10 bucks new. So I paid double to get the vintage, but so what? I am so happy to have the older formula. It is amazing. Um, the spices, the patchouli, it's so easy to wear. I mean, look at that sprayer. Um, but if you're a woman, don't let the um, piggish advertising put you off. Jovan Sex Appeal would... Uh, would work wonderfully on a woman. That was 1976. Now we're going to go to 1978. One of my favorite fragrances of all time, although I don't think it made my top 10 list, but it's, it's, it's an amazing scent. Uh, and this is the vintage. And I will say, if you're a, uh, if you're a woman who is, um, a little bit wild and provocative or not provocative, but, um, if you are, someone who is um, curious and willing to try new things, let's say, go for the vintage of Lagerfeld Cologne. If you're someone that's maybe a little bit more timid and you don't want to offend, you're worried about what other people think, go for the new formulation of this with all the fangs removed. The new formulation has a different writing of Lagerfeld. I've talked about this on my channel many a times. Um, and but it kind of has removed the oak moss, removed the old school 70s masculine feel. And you're left just with this beautiful orangey, powdery, you know, fragrance. Um, but the but the vintage is the most beautiful of the bunch because it has a little bit more tobacco, a little bit more oak moss, a lot more oak moss. Um the staying power is longer. The ingredients smell higher quality. All the stuff I rave about about vintage uh, is here. But this, this is actually the fragrance that Heinke said uh, she thought in uh, the old days would smell amazing on a woman. That her friend's brother had this or something. And I agree. I think this would smell absolutely stunning on a woman. Um, so Lagerfeld Cologne. Mine is uh, marketed by Bethco. But um, any 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 of these old school versions with the writing and the real, you know, not the plastic, the real um, metal cap um, is is worth getting. You can easily tell by the writing. Um, but uh, beautiful on a woman, I think. Okay, now we're gonna go to one out of left field. This is gonna shock some people. Like I said, some of these uh, you might have guessed. This one you will not guess. But again, this is just my opinion, and this is a chiffre. And this was created by the woman who created Youth Do for women from the 50s, uh, which um, I forget her name right now, but if you look up Youth Do, this, that's the perfumer of this fragrance. And this is Chaps by Ralph Lauren. This is a chiffre. Um, this is a Cosmere bottle. It's pretty small, so I won't show you. But I'll tell you what. This is this... Powdery again, okay? So I went with powder, but this has this old school chiffre feel to it that I absolutely love. I love this fragrance. I think this is a bit of a hidden gem. Uh, this used to be the cheapie in the collection, by the way. If you couldn't afford Ralph Polo uh, Green, which came out in 78, this came out a year later in 79. And um, this used to sell for $5 for 100, 100 ml? I believe so. Yes, 100 ml. 
five bucks for 100 ml back in the day. These are selling for hundreds on eBay right now. And uh, beautiful citruses and spices. It says there's ambergris in here. Maybe in the old days there really was. There's definitely oak moss. There's definitely leather, but it's the vanilla and the powderiness from the lavender and the sandalwood that just makes this such an ev evocative fragrance. I think this would smell amazing on a woman. I think it would smell drop dead on a woman. Uh, you would smell like no woman out there. Okay, now we're going to go back to the house of Lagerfeld, and we're going to jump from 79 to 86. Big jump. Um, this is a fragrance called KL Om. Now, there's also a KL by Lagerfeld for women that came out a few years earlier, but I think even the Om version uh, would smell amazing on a woman because it has that same kind of um, powdery uh, orange type feel. There's this orange note running through the middle, just like with um, Lagerfeld Cologne. There's this orange note running through the middle of KL Om, but... They amp up the rosewood, which rosewood is also used in Abbey Rouge to perfection. And there's a beautiful floral heart. You get carnation, you get rose, geranium, jasmine, and then you get sandalwood and cinnamon. But in the base, you get this civet and benzoin uh, and, and vanilla and musk and amber. Uh, beautiful amber fragrance, by the way. If you're a fan of uh, fragrances like Grand Soir, stuff like that, get your nose on this. It almost looks like a liquor, like a whiskey glass, doesn't it? Excuse me. Um, and it does have a little bit of that orange liqueur vibe to it. Absolutely stunning. Uh, actually, one of my subscribers um, bought this, paid big money for it. 120 ml, I only have the 60. I'm jealous, he got the 120. And uh, reported back and said it was worth every penny he was wearing it today. Um, <sighs> amazing. Amazing stuff. All right, now we're going to go to one that you probably expected. And I'll explain why. This is Akitos. By Alain Delon. And Akitos... Okay, here's the story with Akitos. Uh, Akitos is a... A uh, fragrance that was done by Gerard Anthony, who is one of the best old school perfumers. He put out some mega hits, okay? He doesn't have the largest portfolio, but what he put out were bangers. This, Balenciaga Pour Homme, I mean, hit, hit after hit after hit. Um, and this was entered into the contest for Dior Poison. This was entered into the Dior Poison they threw their hat in the ring with this composition. Dior turned them down, okay? Alain Delon picked it up and turned it into a masculine fragrance. And uh, we got Akito. So this is a little bit of a trick. Not really, because it definitely is marketed towards men. Um, but the formula itself was actually created for Dior's Poison, uh, which Jean-Louis Suizac, I think, did the formula that actually turned into Poison. And it turned into a big hit. Um, this was a little bit more of a cult following. <laughs> it has amazing jasmine, rose, patchouli, sandalwood. The top has some ginger, cardamom, and mandarin orange. And then the base has amber, leather, and musk. Absolutely beautiful fragrance. And I'm so glad Rich Mitch likes this because sometimes he doesn't like florals. Um, this would smell killer on a woman uh if you look at some of the comments in fragrantica and stuff there's some guys on there that say oh this smells like a grandma or can't believe a guy would wear this no uh you and your spouse could wear this at the exact same time and you both would smell stunning you'd smell like nothing else you know roja dove is probably jealous of this composition it is amazing it is amazing from the materials to the way it was made to the feel it is a little bit powdery as well but it's the florals. There's some indolic aspects. It's so deep. It's so complex. Um, and just be, and this is very hard to find, by the way. So don't just expect you're going to go to your local Walgreens and find this. You won't. You're going to have to do some serious digging. If you're a woman that's really into this hobby, put this on your list. Trust me. Put this on your list. Put this on your unicorn list. If you come across it, grab it. <clears throat> okay. 
Now we're gonna go to one that is still readily available, but is getting harder to find. Rudy actually bought this and reported back, said, I can't believe how good this is, and I agree. And it's in the same vein as Akitos. It's in the same idea. It's a masculine floral. Huge floral, huge. Uh, and this is called Paco Rabanne Tenere. Now, Tenere came out in one year after Akitos. Akitos came out in 87, Tenere came out in 88, and I love this fragrance. I absolutely love Tenere. Um, it has this uh, very um, almost traditional opening in a way. <sighs> you know, um, it takes elements from stuff like this, but it also takes elements from stuff like... Um, Hugo Boss number one. So imagine if you mixed the honey, the animalic honey from Hugo Boss number one with the amazing florals of Akitos and a leather base with this very indolic, very pissy um, floral makeup. So it has very indolic jasmine, pissy cassia. Um, cassia, I believe, are the, um, black currant leaves that give off this pissy vibe. So you get this very pissy animalic honey with cassia, and then green notes with, you know, traditional masculine notes are, are thrown in there, like rosemary, tarragon, stuff like that, anise, anise, but it's not like, don't think, um, azaro poro. Uh, and, but... But what makes it up is the beautiful florals. And I think this would smell absolutely stunning on a woman. These two, if you're a girl and you're into florals, you have to smell these. These will blow your mind. You'll fall off your chair and hit your head. Uh, and then wake up and forget what smells so good and it'll be you. It is amazing stuff. And I have a 200 ml backup bottle of this because I got this little 25 ml bottle wore it and went, my God, what is this? I need it. And I found a 200 ml bottle, thank God. <sighs> I gotta talk about this more. Okay, another out of left field recommendation from me and another hard to find fragrance. Uh, but I just, I have to be honest with you. This is where my heart said to go with this video. So this is where I'm going. Um, this is a fragrance from the 90s, so we're jumping from 88, uh, we're jumping to um, 1994, and this is a fragrance from Donna Karen, and it's called DK Men. This is the original DK Men from 94. They've since reformulated a, a, a bottle or a flanker or whatever they want to call it. And they called it DK Men Unleaded, I think. That's a completely different fragrance. This has to be the original from 94. Uh, and this is also very powdery, very fruity, and very floral. Um, it was created by IFF in 94. This has pineapple, peach, apricot. It's very succulent, juicy. It has osmanthus, which is a flower that smells like a nectarine. It has orange blossom. Check out this floral heart. Elang. So, Elang Elang. Orchid. Orchid. Heliotrope. Carnation. Jasmine. Rose. Lily. And Cassia. Um, the base is suede. Incense must. The base is probably the most traditionally masculine part of this fragrance. Everything else is feminine. There's vanilla. The floral heart. The fruity opening. Um, with sandalwood and benzoin. So there's um, benzoin and vanilla and patchouli and tonka and vetiver and citruses. There's citruses listed in the base. Um, it's an insane fragrance, and I can see why people kind of fell in love with it because it's so different. Um, but there's nothing masculine about this to me, other than maybe a little bit of leather in the incense. Um, this is a feminine fragrance that they marketed towards men and because it was so different and they put it in this insane helmet looking bottle, you know, it looks like, um, 
looks like Thor's helmet coming at you or something, um, you know, men bought it. And uh, it's, it's kind of a cult classic right now, but it goes for big money. Um, so, anyways, like I said, if you're a woman that's big into this hobby, put this on your list. Okay, now I'm going to talk about a fragrance um, that came out in the year 1994. And this came out um, by a house that no one talks about. And again, the only reason I have this is because of Anuj. So Anuj, thank you, my friend. Um, and this is called If. If by Sorella Fontana. No one talks about this house because this is long discontinued. It comes in a... Top comes off like that. And it comes in a... Um, in what looks like a book. If you go to Parfumo and type in If For Men, you'll pull this up and you'll see the book I'm talking about. You can see how the bottle kind of sits inside of the book. Very similar to how, um, uh, who's that niche house that does Egypt and, uh, oh God, now it's going to bother the heck out of me. Um, said JFK wore their fragrances. Oh, well, I'm getting off topic. It'll come to me later. Um, but um, If, is the the easiest way for me to explain if for men there's also an if for women is almost like a citrusy aromatic version of Jaipur Om by Boucheron which is coming up next by the way um but this has galbanum in the top myrtle lavender cinnamon basil pimento myrrh sandalwood musk vanilla benzoin tonka so think of that vanilla that you get from uh, Jaipur Om, okay, the vanilla, the benzoin, the way Anique Minardo does the kind of resins, and make it a little bit more aromatic and citrusy. They tried to make it more for men. Actually, this came out first, I should say. This came out before um, Jaipur Om. So really, maybe Anique Minardo took some clues from this fragrance even. But um, this is a big hidden gem. Came out the same year as this, DK Men. Um, these two came out in 94. Uh, and so, but this is one that I think would smell great on a woman. Uh, it's definitely a hidden gem. You're not going to smell like anyone else. And that Tonka vanilla, you have to like um, some spices. It is a little bit spicy. I think the myrtle and pimento give off this um, kind of spicy, you get citrus vibe, you know, the citrus vibe, the lavender kind of thing, but it's a beautiful fragrance. And um, just because it says, if for men, don't let that discourage you. Okay, now we are going to go to Jaipur Om, and I specifically picked the EDP. I think the EDP is um, a little bit more masculine. And so here you go. Jaipur Om, beautiful bottle, look at that. Looks like a... Um, like a temple or something. And um, this is an oriental, spicy oriental. Uh, and the great Anique Minardo made this. Bergamot, heliotrope, cardamom, lime, and lemon. Amber, jasmine, carnation, nutmeg, rose, vanilla, and cinnamon. Benzoin, clove, patchouli, tonka, and cedarwood. So, um, it says a sensual and modern spicy oriental fragrance, a fresh opening followed by a spicy accord softened by an intense and woody signature. Don't let that stop you. Again, if you're a woman, um, this would smell absolutely stunning on you. It's a little bit powdery. Uh, it's a little bit floral. It's a little bit vanilla. It's a little bit benzoin. You know, it, the clove adds that spiciness, that, um, that little bit of extra zest, if you will. <clears throat> Amazing. If you're an oriental lover, you have to smell the eau de parfum of Jaipur Om. Okay, now we're going to go to another one of those hidden gems I've been talking to you about that I think would smell amazing on a woman. And again, these are just my two cents, but uh, I own the bottles and I've given them wares and um, formulated my own opinion. And so this is from the year 1999. Look at the bottle. Um... And it's called Yoshi Om from the house of Yoshi Yamamoto. And Yoshi Om released this fragrance multiple times. This came out in 1999, okay? And that's the version you want. If you get any other version, 
any other version, you will be disappointed, period, end of story. If you get the reformulated 2013 version, if you get the, um, if you get this, that it's not the 1999 version, any other version, you will, you will hate it. So you have to make sure you do your research and you get the correct bottle. Um, but if you can find the 1999 version, which is hard to do, but I think Anuj might have some. Um, this is a fragrance that I think would smell amazing on a woman because it has a lot of facets that I think modern w woman perfumery would would really benefit from using more like for example there's cinnamon rosewood um there's even rum and coffee okay um the top is aniseed leather bergamot and coriander there is some geranium incarnation and then you get sandalwood tonka and cedar now um this is a very soft scent Okay, it's very elegant, it's very soft. While it may lean a little bit more masculine because of the woody aspects to it, um, you know, if, if a woman can wear Feminita Dubois, she should easily be able to wear something like this. And this has some a little kick, a little interesting, some leather, some coffee, some rum. I think it would smell, I think it would smell amazing on a woman going out uh, absolutely stunning stuff i have a backup bottle of this by the way okay now we're gonna go to a very clean fragrance now this was marketed towards men but they did a reformulation repackaging re whatever you want to call it and marketed it towards women or i'm sorry marketed it towards um unisex but this particular version is for men and it's a fragrance from Helmut Lang, and it's called Eau de Cologne. Well, this actually is the Eau de Cologne, I should say. So there's multiple versions of this Helmut Lang. This is the Eau de Cologne. The Eau de Cologne is the one that's discontinued and marketed towards men. Okay, so that's the one that you want if you're following along on this list. And... What makes this fragrance even more unique is Helmut Lang was specifically involved in the creation of this fragrance, okay? And what came out, what he wanted actually, what, and this is a story you can actually find, I'm not making this up. Um, he wanted this to smell like his boyfriend's secretions on clean white sheets. That's what he wanted. Very, very clean, very, you know, there's lavender, there's powder, there's um, heliotrope, there's musk. It's a very simple fragrance that has some floral aspects. Um, there's also rose and jasmine, by the way, but I think this would smell great on a woman. It's very clean. Uh, there's very little masculine about this. I, I have no clue how they chose to do this one towards masculine, this one towards women. These helmet langs are just easy breezy to wear. Um, for the summer, this would smell great on a woman. Okay, another Anique Minardo, and it's a Koros flanker. You might fall out of your chair with that one, but it's body Koros, don't worry. And body Koros, I think, belongs here because, yes, it has some traditionally masculine qualities, uh, like some camphorous woods and frankincense and cedar, but it also has... Anique Minardo's beautiful touch of benzoin. There's mace. There's even a eucalyptus note here. Very rare to find a eucalyptus note. To me, this is very calming, very easy to wear. While I think it smells great on men, I wear this and I love it. I think it would smell amazing on a woman as well. So body coros, don't overlook this one. Try to get a sample. Try to find a sample from the bottle that has this weird looking top or bottom, I should say because that's the vintage, that's what you want, is that strange looking, you know, little piece here, um, which it falls over all the time, it's terrible, but um, the one with the built-in sprayer, I think has been reformulated, but uh, it's, still, it's still available, it's still a good fragrance. Okay, now we're gonna jump to the year, that was 2000 by the way, now we're gonna jump to the year 2005, 
And I didn't include Dior Homme because I included this instead. Dior Homme easily could have made the list. It was very metrosexual, very irisy, you know, that kind of thing. But this is a fragrance that almost took its cue from Dior Homme. And it's called L'Anvin Arpige Pour Homme. I mean, look at the cap. It almost looks like a Dior Homme cap. And um, all of Olivier Peshaw made this. Oh, this would smell fantastic on a woman. This has this um, narrowly citrus pepper thing going on in the top. And then there's iris and jasmine and nutmeg with vanilla, tonka, sandalwood, and patchouli. Absolutely stunning. It'll give you a feel of a vanilla, very vanilla take on Dior Homme. Um, but I think it would smell great on a woman. Okay, now we are going to go to a fragrance from the house of Victor and Rolf. My favorite from Victor and Rolf. And no, it is not Spice Bomb. It is Antidote. Now, Antidote... Um, supposed to be the antidote to boring fragrances. Um, oh God, it's so good. This is hands down my favorite Victor and Rolf. Hands down, no question. This just, blo this just, you know, sends Spice Bomb crying in the corner. Um, this is citruses at the top with mint and cardamom. And then the base is a huge explosion of florals. Freesia, geranium, lavender, nutmeg, orange blossom, violet, cinnamon, and then the base, amber, oak moss, guyac wood, beautiful iris in this, beautiful labdanum as well. Leather, patchouli, vanilla, tonka, white musk, sandalwood, cedar. Okay, so you hear all that, you think heavy fragrance. It's not. This is a, you could wear this in the summer, you could wear this in the spring. You could wear this anytime. It's It doesn't project very much. It sits close to the skin. This would blow somebody away if a woman wore this. This would absolutely stun them, I think. They wouldn't know what to think if they smelled this on a woman. Um, and obviously, it's geared towards men, uh, marketed towards men. Uh, this is a 125 ml bottle, and these are getting very hard to find. So again, this is another one you're going to have to dig. You're going to, if you're a if you're a connoisseur of fragrances, you're going to have to really put in some work to, to try to find these. Okay, now we're going to go to one of my favorite Francis Kirkjohn creations of all time, and this is a little 40 ml bottle that I have of Fleur du Mal, um, uh -huh, with the very classy profile. Uh, and Fleur du Mal is, um, basically a orange blossom, chamomile, uh, petit gran. There's a slight green hint of maybe like galbanum or basil or something like that. And then kumarin. And that's it. It's very simple, but the chamomile note is outstanding. It gives off that white color, you know, chamomile. If you like chamomile tea, this is orange blossom and chamomile. Um, and there's a niche version of this fragrance to my nose coming up, um, later on in the countdown. But if you're a woman, uh, I, I wear this even though it's very floral, very, um, it's very strange for a man's scent. Very strange. Uh, but, uh, it's different and that's what I like about it. And, uh, I wear this in the summer, even though the projection in, Longevity is outstanding. This thing lasts like 15 hours on my skin. Okay, now we're going to go to another Anique Monardo. I just can't help myself. Um, and this is a house called D Squared, and this is called Potion. Okay, now Potion came out in 2011, and this is a very interesting fragrance because... It has some facets from Royal Oud, which also came out in 2011. And I think it was a Julien Rasquinet. Uh, this is Angelica Mint and Thyme. Gentian, Pepper, Rose, and Cinnamon. Base, Amber, Cashmere Wood, Musk, and Patchouli. So, she's worked her magic again by using that combo of this peppery, benzoin. It's almost like this warm, it's almost like this warm, gooey, ambery thing just giving you a hug. A woman could easily wear this and smell outstanding. 
Um, I love wearing it. I think I smell outstanding while wearing it, but I would love to smell this on a woman. Absolutely love to. Okay. Now is where we get out of order. And uh, the next seven fragrances, we're down to the last seven, um, are not in order. They are out of order, I believe. Um, so the countdown has pretty much lasted in order until now. And then I said, screw it. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. Because we're going to a new house. And that house is Amouage. And the first fragrance from Amouage should not surprise you. But there will be some surprises here. The first one is Gold Man. Now, Gold Man reminds me cl very closely to Joy. Patou, Patou, Patou pour Homme's... Patou pour Homme. Jean Patou's... Is it Jean Patou? I can't do anything right right now. Uh, just Joy by Patou, okay? Um, reminds me very much of Joy with some amped up uh, frankincense, amped up myrrh, and um, um, amped up um, civet, okay? Civet is the final piece of the puzzle. It is dirty, but it's very powdery, very floral. Uh, my wife thinks this smells like baby powder sometimes, uh, but I still love it. It has dog rose too, or what they call rose hip, I believe. But, um, I think this would smell great on a woman. Most people say this smells closest to gold woman. So I guess you could go for gold woman, but if you wanted to try the man's version, um, I think this would smell great on a woman. How about the presentation? Just gold just flowing down the side. I absolutely love it. I love the um, matching Swarovski crystal. I love Amouage's presentations. And this isn't even a made in Oman. This is a made in UK bottle. And it's still absolutely amazing. Mmm, <sighs> so good. Okay, now we are going to go to one that might shock some people. And this is a made in Oman bottle. Um, this is... Dia Man. Now, Dia Man um, came out in 2002. And oh, this would smell outstanding on a woman because this uses a very rare note in perfumery. And the reason that it's rare is it's a very soft note, a very soft floral. Um, and that note is called Peony or peony, I don't know how to pronounce it, say peony. Um, and peony is a flower that uh, you could literally have it right next to your face and you wouldn't be able to smell it. You would have to stick your nose into it to smell it. But it's the most narcotic floral scent. It's so beautiful, but you can't smell it unless you get right on, the, right on top of it. Um, and this uses peony to perfection with frankincense, labdanum, some citruses and cardamom, there's plum blossoms, there's ylang ylang, there's iris, beautiful iris note in this. Um, I mean, what a beautiful fragrance this is. I think this smells great. I wear this in the summer, but on a woman, this would be a knockdown, drag out banger, uh, in my opinion. And the old Amouage bottles, the way they used to put Amouage on there, like you can feel it raised. And the bottom is completely different. Notice that? So this is a made in Oman. Um, dear man, what a beautiful creation you are. Now we're going to go to the niche version of uh, Fleur du Mal, if you will. Fleur du Mal came out, what did I say? Uh, 2007? Yes. Well, this also came out in 2007. How's that for happenstance? And this is Reflection Man. Now, I know what you're thinking. Um, reflection Man. Yes, Reflection Man. It is a floral, sweet, um, very likable fragrance I think would go great on a woman. It does have some musks that might put some people off. But uh, it also has some woody, woody bits in the base. But it's the Iris, Jasmine, Narrowly, Ylang Ylang, and this uh, bitter orange leaf thing happening at the top. That would be absolutely stunning on a woman. It smells clean. It smells fresh. It smells... This would go great in uh, summer, I think. Um, just would love to smell this on a woman. 
So, um, Reflection Man, if you're a floral fan, you have to get your nose on this. Okay, now we're going to go to one of my hidden gems. And um, I call this a hidden gem because I don't think many people know about this fragrance. At least I never hear it talked about, ever. Uh, and it has a beautiful iris, beautiful LME, um, and, and gorgeous, um, uh, saffron and, uh, cardam and, um, um, olibanum. And this is a fragrance called Beloved Man. Look at the dent I put in Beloved. It is Beloved to me. It's so nice. It's so pleasant. There's nothing off-putting about this. One of the nicest amouages. Um... The grapefruit in the in the opening is literally outstanding. For the summer, it is drop dead gorgeous. The grapefruit in this will put you on your bum. Uh, grapefruit, LME, iris, jasmine, geranium, saffron, guyac wood, cedar wood, leather, patchouli, vetiver, and musk. I think this would smell stunning on a woman. Probably the most vetiver heavy perfume Amouage has. But uh, it's the LME, the grapefruit, the iris, the jasmine that really make this. And the saffron. Gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. And then the one that's really not fair to put on a list. Because I think it's more feminine than Lyric, than the woman's version, which is Lyric Woman. And that's Lyric Man. I think Lyric Man is more feminine than Lyric Woman, to be honest with you. But it's so good. If you want to smell one of the best modern masculine roses, you have to get your nose on Lyric Man. This is a made in Oman version. You won't be able to see it because it's so dark, but uh, one day, one day when I have my light up, I'll show you when I'm up in my new office. Um, and this is uh, basically bergamot and lime in the top, angelica and galbanum, which is a killer combination, by the way. With rose, saffron, orange blossom, nutmeg in the base, in the mid, and then the base has pine. That pine is very important in this fragrance with frankincense, vanilla, sandalwood, and musk. I mean, as a guy wearing this, you know you're going to knock them dead. But if you're a girl and you wear this, um, you would you would turn heads all over the place. This is really a projection beast too. People smell you forever wearing this. Um, Gorgeous rose, absolutely stunning. So glad to have a bottle. There's a designer version, by the way, that has a beautiful rose note in it. And that is this, Moschino Toy Boy. This was geared towards men. This has a rose that reminds me a bit of Lyric Man, but it's almost more masculine in a way because they've used pear and clove and elemy in the top with cashmeran, magnolia, and uh, flax blossom. Haitian Vetiver, Am Amber Max, and, and um, Psycholide, Psycho which both of those are synthetics, obviously. But it gives off this very masculine, almost a more masculine take on Lyric Man to me. It's the Clove and the, um, I think, Cashmeran that give off that masculine. There's also Pink Pepper at the top, but um, it is, um, it's, it's, it, some guys might have a hard time wearing these last two I just showed you, but I think a woman could easily wear these and, and, and smell amazing. But guys should not be scared to wear them, even though they're made for men. That's kind of the modern, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a bit of a, um, it's a conundrum for men because sometimes, uh, especially people who like old school fragrances, they'll say this isn't a masculine fragrance. It is nowadays, you know. The last one will feature in my Tonka video one day when I do my This Is Not A Top 10 Tonka. This is my favorite Tonka, actually, believe it or not. Um, and I was a little hesitant to put it in here because there's a prominent tobacco note, uh, but I think the Tonka outweighs it enough to where I think this would smell amazing on a woman. And this is a fragrance by the house of Robert Graham, and it's called Fortitude. Okay, now, fortitude. So here's the thing. It's discontinued. Beautiful. Um, look, a ram. Ram's head. Um, <sighs> I usually don't like Tonka. I think I'm kind of nose blind to Tonka sometimes, okay? 
the tonka bean in this is is sweet in a way that i really enjoy um but it's there's also patchouli that I think helps it boost it a little bit. The tobacco, absolute. If you like fragrances like tobacco vanille, you have to give this a try. It's different than tobacco vanille. It's different from fragrances like Pure Havana and stuff like that, but I think this would smell, in the winter, on a woman, this would smell drop-dead gorgeous. Um... So that's my final one. We kept it exactly at an hour. Um, I put a lot of time into this. I hope you appreciated it. And um, leave me some comments on some masculine fragrances that you think would smell amazing on a woman. Uh, and um, leave a comment anyways, because I like interacting with you guys. That's my favorite part of all this. I've told you before, I'm not doing this to become YouTube famous or make money on the videos or anything. Uh, I'm doing it to share my love and knowledge and passion of fragrances, and so uh, a like and a thumbs up is always appreciated, but I won't ask you for it, and um, I, th I thank you for sharing an hour of your time with me if you made it all the way through, and I will see you again tomorrow with another fragrance video. Bye-bye.